Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and I'm pleased to have on the head coach of the Talent Baseball Program in his second year, but technically it's his first year because his first year was shortened by COVID. We'll get into that in a little bit. Howie Deach, Coach Deach, thanks so much for being able to come on. Thanks, Chris. Really happy to be here. You know, first and foremost, before we get into the baseball stuff, and we'll probably talk about a lot, you know, how's everything with you and your family during this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, luckily, we've been really good. Um, you know, really blessed to be uh, healthy and safe here. So, um, you know, prayers out to everybody else that's been going through some stuff. But we've been really lucky. I actually got married uh, this past summer, did a small little ceremony in my now wife's cousin's backyard. So um, that's been awesome. And my wife's actually now seven months pregnant, too. So we've been oh. doing, doing really well. Well, congratulations to the newborn. I know, I know it's not yet, but congratulations to that. Congratulations on being married. And hopefully everybody will stay healthy for the foreseeable future. Yes, thank you. No problem. Now let's get into the baseball because that's the stuff why I have you here. You yeah. know, I think first and foremost, I kind of want to ask you, just going back a little bit to when you were hired in January. And it seemed like, I'm sure it came at you very quickly, you know, March 10th. You know, we know about what happened following two days after the entire basically world basically shut down. We know the, you know, the, the U S did what was going through your mind when you got the news that no spring season done. Yeah. So we were supposed to start as everybody else, pitchers and catchers that Saturday, I think the 13th or 14th of March. Um, and I've been talking to my AD leading up to that. Um, he was meeting with superintendents and principals trying to figure out, what was going to happen. Um, and actually, I think it was that Thursday, he texted me, yo, we're good to go. You'll be fine for Saturday. And then Friday morning, he texted me saying things have changed. Um, but it was still, you know, the state wasn't really sure. Nobody was sure what was going to happen. So everybody left for the two weeks. I'm, I'm a teacher at Manchester. So packed up my room for two weeks and we thought we'd be back in two weeks. So, you know, I think in the back of my mind, the whole time I knew we would never play last year but there was still the hope and I was like you know first year how is this happening kind of thing but we, I stayed in contact with some we did some virtual stuff um, with the, the talent guys that I had met at the time um, but then as the spring rolled on it was getting more and more obvious that there would there would be no season so um, just had to accept it and realize that you know what this is a blessing in disguise it gives me a chance personally to kind of prepare myself more you know being a first year, first time varsity head coach, there's just so much to do. Um, so in retrospect, having another year to do all those things and prepare mentally and um, have paperwork ready and line up coaches and just be ready to go has been great for me this year. So as much as I feel bad for the seniors last year that didn't get to play their senior year and you know, all the way down freshmen that didn't get to play freshman year and all that. Um, for me, at least it's worked out in the end because I've had that chance to kind of reflect on where I was a year ago um, and where I am now. And with you being able to reflect coach, I know typically at the end of a, of a uh, athletic season, regardless, pardon me, of, of the sport, it could be basketball, soccer, baseball, hockey, l lacrosse, whatever. It, you know, you look back on what was the past season and you try to figure out, okay, this is what I can work on. Maybe I could do a little bit more bump plays. Maybe I could have more, uh, maybe I can give more of my guys at the top of the order, the green light on a 3-0 pitch, whatever it is. But for you coach, because, you know, in your first season, you, re you didn't have a season, basically. What did you do to kind of reflect and improve your status as a head coach? One of the biggest things that I'm trying to do this year is a lot more classroom talk. So I've worked and prepared some PowerPoint slideshow stuff. There, there's so much teaching to do on the field. So being able to, on a rainy day, for example, when maybe our gym time is limited to an hour and a half in one gym at seven o'clock at night, let's go into a classroom for an hour beforehand. And we can go over whether it's mental stuff, um, whether it's pitch sequences, um, whatever, whatever it is that we are trying to, to work on that week. I've started to make slideshows um, on Google that I can just throw in a folder and then we can pull up into a classroom and have a chat. Um, and, and a lot of that comes from social media that I've 
you know, on Twitter, Instagram, from professional coaches that love to share their thoughts. I've just pulled videos and then we can go in the classroom and I can put it on the projector and say, you know, this is watch this play that happened last night in whatever major league baseball game or in a college baseball game, you know, watch how they did this, these things, whether it was right or wrong. And that's just a great teaching point. So that's really helped break down some stuff. We did that. We've done it twice already. Um, we did it once during pitchers and catchers week where we just went in and talked about some of the mental side of pitching um, some of the physical stuff as well with pitching with our legs. We noticed that a lot of our guys aren't doing that necessarily where we want them to be. So we can show some videos of a guy like Jack Leiter at Vanderbilt right now. Um, and, you know, look, look at him using his legs. Um, I know I pulled up a, my dad will love to hear this. I pulled up a video of Tom Seaver. You know, he used to always say to me, you know, picture your legs, your knees should hit the ground. And I was like, yeah, whatever dad. But, you know, I use that as the example showing my guys, you, you know, do you have to use your back hip, use your legs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been time to just sit down and relax for a second, you know, take a second to breathe. And then just, this is what, I, this is why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching. You know, like I'm still learning as well, which has been a great, another year to learn. Um, because I'll, I told them, I tell the guys all the time, I don't know everything. Um, if you have something that you want to teach us, by all means do so. Mm -hmm. um, as long as there's data to back it up, let's do it. So it's been a great chance to kind of take a step back, look at why we do some of the drills we do, you know, where are we getting some of these things from? Um, why is it important to throw a first pitch strike? You know, why, why don't major league pitchers do it when they can? So um, bringing in actual factual data and having them see it on a board instead of me just yelling it out during practice when they're probably not listening anyways, has been a great time for me. So that, I guess, to answer your question, that's been my biggest thing is being able to, to build these slideshows in. Um, we did another one with the whole team last week after teams were picked, just like mental buy-in stuff. Um, last year, I went to the Mohegan convention. We, they did it again virtually this year. So just, I wrote down a lot of stuff like Coach Tremper at Stetson talked a lot about mental side of baseball. Just sharing, the, sharing those things with these guys and explaining why we have to do the things we do. I think this brand of athletes over the last, I'd say 10 years since kind of technology has started to evolve in all sports. I think we've, and I don't want to say we've moved away from just saying it and whatever we say as coaches or such. And I'm not saying me, but I'm just saying we in general, whatever is said by coaches is law and that's it. It's in the Bible. I think this brand of athletes that we're getting now ask questions. They want to know why they want to be, you know, kind of like what we're seeing now with this virtual stuff, they want to be shown, they want to be kind of in that person be told, okay, this is what, you know, uh, this is what I'm trying to explain. Here's what it is. And I think the point that you made about Al Leiter's kid, Jack Leiter, I mean, I saw your tweet and I loved it about, you know, your comment about, uh, you know, the game they pitched against LSU. I mean, seven of it, you know, seven of his first eight outs were on strikeouts. I mean, he, he just looked like he was overwhelming LSU. And there was a point of the game where they made a comment about, about how his dad and how he helped him along the way. And they kind of, they, you know, they put up a picture of him pushing off the rubber using his legs. I mean, it was picture perfect. And I, I, you know, when I saw that, I was like, I hope there's a thousand coaches taking that picture and showing that to their high school uh, players. Yeah, that's, and that's where for me, you can ask my guys at TCB that I coach in the summer and the, in the winter, I'm all about the video. You know, I have, thousands of videos on my phone that I just pull out and I'm like, whether it's swings, defense, pitching, whatever, catching, whatever it is. And I can explain to them, you know, this is what I want you to do here. Look, look at Jack Leiter pitching, look at pool hole swinging, look at Molina catching. There's a reason I'm trying to teach it to you. It's not just the old thought of a hundred years ago that this is the way we do things. Well, here's actual professionals doing it. Here's college guys at the highest level doing it. Here's, you know, Jack Leiter making LSU hitters look like Little League hitters. Mm -hmm. So if, if they're doing those things, then we should be doing those things. There's no difference. Now, looking at the fact of, you know, since we're on the subject of technology, analytics has become a huge part of the game. I don't know how you feel about that. I've talked to coaches younger and older who are kind of, even some of the younger ones go to the old side. Some of the older coaches are starting to kind of get used to the new way. And I don't know about you, but I feel like analytics is kind of affecting 
all brands from the majors to the minors to the collegiate level all the way to the high school level. I feel like kids are trying to, you know, they're worried so much about their spin rate when in the high school level, it should be, who cares about your spin rate right now? Throw five strikes in a row because you can only throw one. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, I hear it all the time, guys talking about so-and-so spin rate. I, I think I'm kind of in the middle. Um, there is set, definitely some stuff where when I'm building a lineup, I'll, I'll look into it. You know, why do we need our typical leadoff hitter? You know, that's kind of gone by the wayside for me. Um, I want my three best hitters to hit in the first inning. and I want them to hit the most. So whoever those three best hitters are, put them one, two, three. Um, you know, I was, I've been talking to some people about strikeouts versus groundouts, which is what is more valuable to an offense in reality. Uh, I've been doing some reading on that, you know, if, is a strikeout actually more valuable or not maybe less detrimental to an offense than a ground ball because a ground ball turns into a double play. So there are some college programs that with two strikes, they force their guys to bunt because they would rather have that bunt turn into a strikeout than the ground ball turn into a double play. Um, it sounds kind of crazy, but you know, it, there might be some truth to it. Um, but yeah, the spin rate, the launch angle, the exit velocity at the high school level, at least, I don't think it's, it's too important. Like you said, you know, th let's throw strikes first. Um, let's put the ball in play first, but, um, I think as you move up higher division one college professionals, when they can actually dig into that data and they have the technology to see um, where the guy's wrist is, you know, where, where his changeup grip is. If, if he, if we turn his wrist a little bit, does that increase or decrease the movement on his pitch? That, that would be awesome. But, you know, Talent high school, we don't have the budget to pay for high speed cameras and track man technology to get to that point. No, and again, I think, you know, I don't want to poo-poo on technology because I think Reb Zoto, I've, I've actually had an opportunity to be able to see it and how it works when I was working during the summer, you know, and such, and you know, or two summers ago now, because the last summer, obviously, everything was closed. But I think there are ways, like Reb Zoto measures uh, spin rate, pitch movement. It can, you know, piece by piece. I mean, Verlander said when he came to the Astros, that technology, he was able to find his slider again because with Detroit, it was lost. I think there's some ways to use it in a positive way. And then there's other ways where, I mean, I don't know if you're a Yankee fan or whatever fan you are, but I'm a Yankee fan and yep. Mr. Book himself, Aaron Boone lives and dies by the book. And I just feel like, you know, there, there, you know, there's a point where it's like, okay, trust what you see on the field. And then if the analytics help you kind of paint the picture, great, but go with what your eyes, if a guy's hitting over, if he's over five against a lefty, but he's been killing it the last couple of days, let him hit the lefty. He's on a hot streak. Right. Yeah, I, I love Rapsodo for, for hitters, actually. Um, it's actually changed the way I've taught hitting in a cage, especially, you know, Northeast winters and spring, we're in the cage a lot. And the old thought was, you know, hit the ball back at the screen, at the L screen, hit the ball, you know, line drive off the back net. Well, you pull out Rapsodo and that line drive off the L screen is a one hop to short in reality. So maybe we should be teaching the ball off the top of the net, you know, to an, to an extent down the, down the line a little bit, because that's your 350 foot line driving the gap versus your, your one hop to short. So, yeah, like you said, there's, there are uses for it. And we definitely, I think we use it more TCB because it's more readily available than it is in Tallinn. But um, yeah, I think eyesight and seeing a guy feel the ground ball. All right. He's, he has potential to be a shortstop versus a guy, maybe not. Now you played at Amity and you were on some very, very good teams. I mean, you played when you were a freshman, the senior was Jason Esposito, who was, you know, just on some fantastic teams and we can go on and on about that, but just kind of take me into what you saw during that time. And then fast forward to now, how has in your eyes, the game changed either for the game, the players or both, if you can dive into both of those. Yeah. So, you know, that being that freshman that year, uh, 2008 was my freshman year that spring, 2008, that team ended up 26 and two, unfortunately didn't win 
either the conference tournament or the state tournament. Those were their two losses. But as a freshman on JV, after we would practice right away on game, on varsity game days and run up the hill at Amity to go watch the varsity game. Um, just because watching them even take IO in batting practice was incredible every day. You know, those, those steps that they took um, to get better and the little things that they did each day. Yeah, so we would go up the hill and that would, they would be just finishing up their IO or just even just starting their, their infield outfield. And there would be a couple of scouts already lined up to watch that team. And, you know, just as a, what, 14 year old kid seeing major league scouts lined up at a high school game was pretty cool to see, but watching them take IO um, was incredible. I mean, the coaches couldn't hit the ball fast enough for those guys to, to field and throw and everything was crisp. Throws were perfect. So it showed me as a freshman that if I want to be on this team, I have to do everything perfect. I have to be able to play catch perfect. Um, I have to carry myself like a professional baseball player, even in high school. Um, you know, the uniform looked perfect. And that's you know, something my mom always talks about. You can just tell by a real baseball player, by the way they carry themselves, the way they wear their uniform. Um, and, you know, everything looked perfect. Um, their BP was perfect. You know, they, they focused on every little thing. They, when they warmed up on the side, they could throw their long toss was perfect, you know, and it was all with, with a purpose. So that certainly carried over. Um, and I will, I want to give a shout out my JV coach that year, Rick Diotalevi, um, had a, a profound impact on me as a freshman on JV. He prepared us for that next step and, and made a point that you're not on varsity yet. And if you want to be, you have to get to this point. So, um, you know, it's just, it's a different culture at Amity where kids grow up in Orange, Woodbridge and Bethany knowing they want to play for Amity. They want to have that chance to win a ring every single year. And if you don't win a ring, then it's a lost year. Whereas other programs, you know, if we get, if we make the playoffs, it's a good year, but that's just not, that's not the expectation at Amity. So having that high expectations, knowing that it starts in October, we would start lifting in the weight room in October and that would carry us right into March for pitchers and catchers. And there would be 30, 40 guys in the weight room three days a week, starting in October, all the way through. And coach would be there and um, you just don't see that anywhere else. Now, looking at, you know, as I mentioned before, going to this present time and then going back to when you were playing and such, and you were around such talented players and, you know, just being around the people that you were, what is the difference as far, is there an attitude difference? Is there a game difference? Cause I feel like the way, and I'm not saying this for all, but I feel like kind of the attitude back then, and maybe it's because, you know, these were not around. Uh, there wasn't so much as far as like Xbox. I think it was just starting to come about, but do you think that there's been certain things that has affected the way the game, I don't want to say the way, you know, the way the game has been played on the field, but just, I guess the attitude, that's what I'm trying to get at the attitude. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I definitely talked to some people and we've all kind of agreed that the, the level of play is not where it was 10, 15 years ago in high school baseball in Connecticut. So I don't know if it's, if it comes down to kids just do other things now and they don't, they're not baseball 24 seven. Not that, you know, some of our best players played hockey, played basketball. So it wasn't like they weren't playing other sports then too, but you know, maybe it is that this generation would rather go home and sit on their phones or um, they'll play video games, but they're not playing sports video games. And I mean, I've told my guys, you can go play video games, but play only the show, you know, and play it for real so that you can work where you can work on pitch counts or pitch sequences. You can work on situations, you know, don't just play for fun with some buddies, but actually play it for real. Like, do it as a manager. And if you can think like a coach on the field, you're, you as a player is just going to be better. So I don't, I don't know what has caused this decline. I think some of it also is this generation isn't as loyal to where they're coming from. So whether it's jumping from AAU program to AAU program and until somebody gives you a chance instead of earning your chance, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kids do it in high school too. And unfortunately you ask some college coaches and they're, they won't recruit those guys because 
they're just going to do the same thing if they don't get playing time out of college. So I don't, I don't have the answer, but I think there are some, definitely some factors that, that have played into why the level of play is down to an extent um, in some places and um, why certain programs do have such low numbers this year. I remember playing uh, 2K 2005 for GameCube. And I remember I used to, I used to recreate myself because I only threw about 78 with heavy, heavy sink because I was a, I was a lefty. So I threw two seam slider, but in the game, I would have myself throw 98 to a hundred, <laughs> a wipeout change up. And I was like, Oh, if I can only, and then I think I had, I think my delivery, I forgot who I put my delivery as, but it was very fluid, very sweet. Not like mine, which was all funky and ugly and stuff. But I think that kind of stuff is, you know, intriguing where if you're going to play, you know, a game, play something where you can kind of maybe not take the velocity if you're a pitcher playing 2K or whatever the game is, but you can kind of, you know, at least like you mentioned, go through the uh, pitch sequencing, go, if you're going to attack a a number three hitter, because you're going to face a three hitter at some point, see how, okay, how do I go maybe a couple inches off the plate and then throw that slider to the back foot? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, the games have gotten so realistic now that those are factors. You know, if you're playing against the computer, Mm -hmm. um, you can do those things. You can use setup pitches, quote unquote. Um, Obviously it's not totally realistic, but I've heard some professional players say that they will use themselves in a video game just to, to, to do those things and practice against even a team they're going to play the next day, you know, right on their off day, they'll, they'll play and will be the show um, as themselves and pitch against the team they're going to play tomorrow and kind of see how am I going to attack this hitter? How am I going to attack that hitter? You know, is this a spot where I can pitch around somebody? So it, it to an extent, it's pretty cool, I guess. And speaking of attacking, how, how have you in your 2021 Talon baseball program, how have you attacked as far as with the scrimmages and just, I know we kind of were talking prior about how trying to get everything in as much as possible before your first game. I know you can't get everything in, but how has that been? Yeah. So we were really lucky. Um, Coach Ron Leno down in West Haven fit us into a jamboree last Saturday. Um, So we went down to West Haven. We played a couple innings against Ansonia and then a couple innings against West Haven. And that was great. You know, you, we, I could tell during pregame, IO, our guys were very uptight. You know, most of them have never played on a varsity field before, never worn a varsity uniform. So they just doing infield outfield, they were, they were tense. So we were able to do that, you know, get that over with, get some real at bats. Um, West Haven has some very good pitching and we actually saw a really good pitcher at Ansonia too. So that was really good to see some real pitching um, as opposed to just some BP stuff or some light pens that we had been doing. But um, for practices, I've kind of tried to pull back a little bit. Um, there's just so much to do when it comes to me learning them and them learning me, right? First year coach, you got, I have 18 varsity guys that have played together their whole lives for the most part. They know one way of baseball. Now I've come in trying to not necessarily change it, but this is the way I've always played and coached let's learn each other we only have two weeks to do it so you have to learn my lingo I have to learn your lingo here's how I always like to get ready for a game how do you guys like to get ready for a game Um, here are some drills that I like to do but I have to explain it to you first so I've kind of the the mantra I've instilled is just one percent better every day let's let's focus on one thing every day so I've given them You know, our our saying today was, if you're unsure, ask. And the the quote last Friday was, hold the ball, right? Don't drop the ball. Hold the ball, don't drop it. How many times can we not drop the ball? How many times do we drop the ball? And that goes for the whole practice. Let's count it. And let's just focus on catching the baseball. And whatever drill we're doing, catch the baseball. Don't let it go past you. Um, So it's just, it's, it's not trying to have this hundred page checklist of like, we have to do this, 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 and this before Mm -hmm. April 10th. So let's focus on, all right, these are the big things we have to get done. We have to be able to feel the team be competitive. So let's focus on the small things first. And then what we can go into some of the more minute things of, um, 
you know, we'll worry about pickoff plays. We have some, obviously, but, you know, more extensive pickoff plays, uh, crazy offensive signs. Let's have, let's do enough to compete first. And then as we have time where we, we've learned each other, then we can dig deeper and go from there. Now, I'm not saying that wins and losses don't mean anything. I think regardless, a loss still stinks and a win is great. But looking at the situation, because I think each situation, each program is different than another. They're, 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 you know, they're, they're not all the same. So looking at your case and with you being now basically a first-year head coach with basically a whole new brand spanking team with the amount of seniors you lost from the previous year, do you think the first couple games – you know, are not going to be, you know, if you lose, you're not going to be as mad. If you win, you're like, okay, only because you just want to make sure that you see your hitters, just looking at the hitting side, taking good swings, going deep into the count and not falling one, two, three, and then you're on the bench. And then on the pitching side, you want to, you just want to see your guys get a feel, get comfortable, throw strikes, but not strikes down the middle, quality strikes. You just want to see the repetitions and get themselves back into the groove again. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I'm going to have to remind myself of, you know, it's only day one, which is what we did back on the first practice. Like, all right, let's take a step back and think about where we are right now. Not only is it my first year with these guys, but some of the guys haven't played baseball in a year. Some of them took the summer and the fall off because of COVID. So they haven't touched a baseball since the fall of 2019. We're going to be starting possibly three or four sophomores. So those sophomores forget playing varsity baseball. They've never played high school baseball before. So I don't want to say I'll be okay with a loss because I, right. Like you said, I'm never okay with a loss, but I think there are moral victories in losses. So, you know, we're going up against a powerhouse in Southington on Saturday. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it's just, it's not going to be a walk in the park by any, by any um, stretch of the imagination. So yeah, if we have good at-bats and there are more positives, if a loss does occur and there are more positive than negatives, then sure, let's build on that going into game two. But as you know, high school season, it's not the marathon that Major League Baseball is. You, If you go off to a slow start, you know, you're in trouble. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to, we got to be ready to go for sure on Saturday. Um, and we're going to go all out. And then, you know, we'll, we'll examine what happens after, after the game. And hopefully there are more positives than negatives. And you talk about the sophomores that haven't even stepped on a field yet because they, you know, as far as with what will happen with the season being lost and all that. Um, a question I have for you, and I asked this for all the baseball coaches that I've had on, or just ones that I know, because I like to get their opinion. Do you think because of the missed season and because of what COVID-19 did, I mean, I saw it in basketball where the level of high school play at least in Waterbury, I don't know about others. It seemed like it was great everywhere else, but I felt like there was a lot of, it wasn't to the same level as I used to seeing broadcasting in the NVL because there wasn't AAU, there wasn't the fall and with everything else going on. Do you think COVID-19 has affected just the high school side? I don't want to get into the college and the pros because that's a whole nother subject, but high school itself, do you think it's affected the level or could affect the level of play for the next couple of years just because of, what's been lost, having to get back on the track again, and then with everything else that's going on. Definitely, definitely. I think our practices have been more basic teaching than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's work on our ground ball technique. You know, forget any high level stuff. I need to teach how to feel the ground ball the, the high school way, not the little league way. Um, you know, let's, let's break it down totally. Let's do our lead ups every single day Another thing that going back to Amity, they do lead ups, ground ball lead ups, fly ball lead ups every single day to get better. And you have to be able to focus on every little thing of that. So that those parts of the game are definitely lacking. Like the, the throw catch field part is down because guys just haven't played. You know, they haven't gotten the reps. Baseball is not a sport where you can just grab your bat on game one and go. Um, we have a couple of guys with arm injuries on the same idea because they didn't throw, they haven't thrown since, you know, the fall, maybe the fall of 2019, even though, you know, we talked to them all winter about make sure you're ready to go, make sure you've been throwing, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're not throwing every day and then all of a sudden you get invited to pitchers and catchers 
on that Saturday and then you're throwing all week and then you're throwing the first week of tryouts, you're going to, you're going to have some arm trouble. So that has limited us as well because guys aren't built up where they usually are, you know, limited indoor space this winter with COVID. Um, and then just not playing enough. You, you got to play in order to be ready. You have to get the reps at the plate. I think, I think offenses will struggle too on that same sense that they just, people haven't seen live pitching, haven't even taken swings enough to be ready um, to go. So I would say overall, I think our scrimmages have been okay um, to an extent, but our, our practices, it's been obvious. And I'm sure this goes for the whole state where there's, and I've talked to high school coaches that are on the same page, like the basics aren't there right now. So forget teaching higher level baseball stuff. Let's just focus on let's, let's do infield boxes. Let's hit some fly balls. Let's work on relays, um, pitchers. Let's work on hitting spots before we get too crazy. And then as the season goes on, hopefully we can add in some, some better things. Coach, I really do appreciate you coming on. I do have one more question for you real quick. As far as the 2021 season for the Tallinn program, what can people expect for uh, people that will be going to the game or maybe watching it if somebody's on Facebook Live or whatever? What can people expect from your program and what is, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but will be your first year? Yeah, I, I think we're excited. Our group is awesome. Um, they're really excited to go. Our dugout atmosphere is, is loud, and that's something that I always preach is let's, let's, be, let's have the right energy. You know, let's, let's focus our energy in the right direction. And um, our guys are, are into every pitch. They, they're very supportive of each other. You know, going back to this idea that these guys have played together their whole lives. Talon, the Talon community is really strong and they love to play Legion. They love to play town ball. They're very supportive of their little leagues. So guys don't really leave to go play AAU or play for other programs. They want to stay home and play for Talon. So that has kept the camaraderie strong. Guys are really supportive. Someone strikes out, three or four guys go over and you know give them give them knocks. Say, hey, you're fine. Don't worry about getting the next one. There really isn't that negative atmosphere at all in the dugout. So no matter what happens, I know that they'll support each other. So that's a huge. That's just one thing I don't have to worry about is that they're they're already a team. We don't have to do those team others because it's already it's already there. So that way we can just build up and go forward. Um, you know, we're going to be young guys are hungry to, to get varsity at bats. Um, they're excited to put on a varsity uniform. Um, they're already arguing about which uniform we're going to wear on Saturday. So um, that's another thing that just to see the young, we do have some good young talent um, and we, we have some good veteran leadership too. You know, guys that started as sophomores on varsity that are going to be, are now seniors that are going to lead us and they're going to, play vital ro roles in the outfield on the mound and at the plate. So um, we're going to have, we're going to have fun and hopefully win a lot of baseball games. Coach, I wish you nothing but the best of luck for the entire 20, uh, 2021 season. Hopefully I can get you back on either the mid season end of the season and hear all about how town baseball was this baseball season. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll wrap things up in the Connecticut sports talent show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember CT stands for the Connecticut talent. I'm on a journey. Find them all. Have a good one, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.